Okay, so in this video, I would like to uh, discuss the guideline for your term paper. So the term paper deadline is July 8th, and there's no late submission. And let me know if you want me to submit your grade earlier, but, but, but you also need to submit your term paper earlier. So if you want to graduate or some other issue you need to graduate soon, uh, please submit your term paper earlier. And also let me know you want to you want me to submit your grade earlier. Then I can directly read your paper and submit to the school. Uh, submit your grade to the school. To accelerate uh, the process. And write your term paper in English. And again, if you use LaTeX, this software, to type your paper, you will get five extra points in your final grade. So that's a lot. So you, I encourage you to, to try this software because it can type the mathematical equation very beautifully. And also, uh, many when you write your thesis you can also use this software to type your thesis that's i think this wealthy to learn to how to do that and in in uh, there's a lot of uh video you can watch to know how to do that and also there's online uh uh software called overleaf i think you can also try to look at this is the online LaTeX editor and they have a lot of template you can just follow even you do not know the the code of LaTeX you can learn it by doing okay and the term paper is later style that means it's not very long paper just roughly six to ten pages including table, figures, footnote, appendix, and reference. So uh, you can see the paper journal called Economic Data or AER Insight. Uh, basically, I just want you to write to the point, not write a lot of things that just I cannot see your point. So write a short paper and to the point. It's much better than write very long paper, but very distract your readers. Distract your readers. Okay, so basically, the goal of term paper is you help you to practice use the credible causal inference method to answer in, uh, very important empirical questions in economics. So it could be either test the economics or, or some social science theory or you want to estimate some policy effects that could be quite important policy or any interesting question regarding human behavior and social phenomena and i think all of your research topics are fit to these three categories so i'm very satisfied with all of your progress so a typical structure of an empirical paper has the following elements but I would say the most important element is the I use the bold chapter to, to indicate the introduction and then you might have data and sample, empirical methods, result and discussion or some conclusion. And it's not necessary you need to have the literature review and theoretical framework. But it's also if you have that will be fine. Uh, I will say some reason why it's not necessary to have this. So the first part is introduction and motivations. So basically the first part of introduction you need to discuss why you want to examine these research questions. Why this question is interesting. So and briefly state why we should care about these questions. Is something on proven empirically some re re uh, theoretical result, some re theoretical result but not having examined in the real data. Or it is, is about some important policy questions, 
you want to use data to examine or some interesting human behavior so basically you will have one paragraph try to discuss uh, try to introduce your research question and why this in, in, re, research question is interesting and then the second part is try to state how you answer these questions briefly state how you answer this question that means you kind of like summarize what you want to do in this term paper so what kind of empirical strategy you want to use to answer this question and what kind of data you will use so it's kind of like summarize what you will do uh, in this paper and after you say that then you can discuss your main findings main results and try to link your main result with the literature or the real life and then you can also discuss the contribution so contribution is uh, you try to link your finding and your paper with the literature with the some uh, people discussed so far okay but I know you might not have a lot of time to do some literature review so you just pick up the most important several important relevant paper try to compare your result with them and you can consider usually we will finish the introduction in the end of the project okay because during in the inter, in introduction part you need to kind of like briefly uh, discuss how you do this and how what kind of result you get so basically after you get all the result you should you can start to write the introduction part and the literature review could be the second section but as you just know you can combine with literature review with the introduction so when you discuss intro when you uh, write your introduction after you discuss your findings you might need to link this finding or your paper with some existing literature so when so when so until that until that, that time you uh you will review some papers so maybe you don't need have necessarily have this part okay but uh so so for the literature review you just need to mention the most relevant papers so you can discuss how why you think your paper is different from the other paper it could be you use different data you focus on different country or use different strategy or any you think could be different or improving improvements compared to previous papers but again i would say you can combine the, this part with introduction okay so it's not necessary to have this the literature review section and theoretical framework uh, is also not necessary but maybe some of your classmate, he, his or her term paper is try to verify some economic theory and you might need this part. So you can briefly discuss theoretically how we think, how do we think about these questions and how does this theoretical framework link with your empirical strategy or empirical uh, setting. And then the data and sample, that's the very important part. So usually it could be you write the introduction, introduction including some literature review, and then you move to the data and sample. It's not necessarily need to have the theoretical framework. So data and sample have two parts. The first part is you describe data. So describe the name and source of data you're using and the period it covers. And describe uh, whether you have the panel data, cross repeat cross sectional data, or time series data, and what the unit of observation is the firm level or individual level, household level, country level, and how many observations you might have. And you might want to highlight some limitation of this data set. And also, you also try to discuss why you want to use this data. Why this data set can help you to answer your question? Why this data set is suitable? So this is the first part of the data and sample. And the second part 
of the data sample is describe your sample, your estimate sample. So you get the data, but you do not use all the data, the, the sample in the uh, all the individuals or all the firms in your data. You might select some sample. So you you need to discuss how you select your sample and also present some summary statistics about the sample you want to use for estimation. So you can pre prepare some summary statistics for them. So describe, uh, make a table with the means or standard error of each variable you want to use for your analysis. And you can also present the, the, the summary statistics by different subgroup, for example, treatment group and control group. So that's the data and sample part, two part. First part is about data, second part is about the, your estimate sample. And the section five could be the empirical methods. So you need to write down the, your empirical specification, equation, and explain. So write down the equation and explain each variable and parameter of interest. And usually we just focus on a specific parameter of interest. For example, different difference just focus on the treatment group dummy and interact with the post dummy. Or the, you use OLS, you maybe just focus on or uh, uh, matching, you just focus on the uh, uh, treatment variable, treatment variable, the, the treatment group variables is coefficient. So you just focus on, you, you, you can just describe this. And also uh, discuss the adaptation assumption of your methods. Okay. And also uh, try to let readers know why you think this can help you to get a causal effect. How can get this? Okay. And after you describe your empirical methods, you can go, you will have the next sessions called results. And you should present your result in a way that develop your argument step by step. So for example, first you might use all the estimate sample to present your main result. So that's the, the main effect, average causal effect of this policy. And then you can perform a lot of several robust checks to see whether your results uh, is robust, whether if you just change some sample selection or change different covariates, how does the, your result change? So you hopefully you don't change a lot. So that's show your results very robust, very strong, very uh, consistent. And then you might break your main result by subgroups. So by gender, by different income group, by different education level to present several subgroup analysis. And uh, the table you show your result, please just focus on the, your, the key variable, that is the effect of your treatment, rather than other covariates, its coefficient is not very important. You, it's not necessary you need to show that. You just need to show the most important coefficient, that is your, the coefficient related to the treatment effect, your causal effect. Okay. So just discuss the most important estimate, the estimate causal effect. So just look at the some economic journal to get the idea of the good table format. Okay. So one possible table format uh, could be uh, the table looks in like this. Uh, let me check. The table I give you. For example, one of my paper, you can see like this. For example, the table could be you just focus on specifics. 
variable that give you the causal effect and you can display uh, these coefficients it's coefficients whether it's change over different control variable so you control for example this first current control these two variable these two type variable and second control other variable and you just show this and you don't need to show all the coefficients of all the variables just focus on the treatment effects causal effects okay and interpret your causal effect or your estimates in an economically meaningful ways so not just say the the the, the, the number you can you need to interpret this result for example, we find the beta, the coefficient is 0.3 uh, so it means increasing x by one unit increasing uh, one year of schooling will increase the, your outcome uh, for example, salary by 0.3 and this implies the elasticity of the schooling to the income is blah 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 so don't just write a number when you present your result please interpret it and uh, discuss its economics meaning and graphs are always good well a thousand words graphical evidence is a very convincing way to show your reader you find something real so for example if you see you synthetic control definitely you need to show the graph uh, DID also showed to the common trend assumption or the any post treatment difference and for the uh, matching you can also show whether your province goal match uh, province goal distribution before and after the matching or the covariance distribution before and after the matching and for the if you use ORS, you can also show some scatter plots between your outcome and your treatment variable. Okay. And discuss whether your key estimate are significant, significantly significant or not. Statistically significant or not. And don't worry if you don't find anything significant. If you don't find anything significant, that's just things. That just say the, the effect is there's no effect. That's also a very important finding. As long as your method are credible. So I only care about the whether you properly use the, the method you 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 implement, the empirical method you want to implement. I don't really care about the result you find. But if you find a good result, that's good, but I don't care. And sometimes the insignificant result, that means no effect, could be interesting. If you can show this result is very robust, very uh, consistent, and you also use very credible way to estimate it, I think that would be very also very important finding. And I also care how you interpret your result. Okay. And finally, you will have the brief conclusion. You can briefly summarize your finding and di discuss potential limitation of your result, uh, your, your paper, your strategy. And also, if you want, you can discuss the future plan about this project if you have more time and data. Okay. So that's all for the guideline for writing a term paper. Thank you.